Hey guys, thank you for joining me on another tutorial. Um, for those of you who do not know, I will be going forward uh, making tutorials on various software and more complex engines. I am in a transitioning phase. However, I will be taking uh, requests for the RPG Maker engine. And as it happens, I do have a request from a YouTube user. And uh, he wants to know how uh, to make NPC names appear over over their heads <coughs> um, during a playable map. So I created this map uh, really quickly. It took me about maybe an hour to make all of this and I'm just going to show you guys um, exactly what he's talking about and I have employed two different methods to um, you know fulfilling that request. Um, each method has a pro and a con, and um, I'll go over that after you guys, you know, get a sense of it. So, I'm just gonna start by showing you guys. Okay, so that is, um, in a nutshell, what it would look like. Um, so you might notice that, okay, so we have three characters here. Leo, the player character, and a character named Kiki. <coughs> so the two methods that I have, you know, sort of explored in this map, uh, you can see one with Leo, and you can see how his name is uh, sort of appearing overhead. And then the other two, the other method I used is um, was for Kiki and the player itself. Okay. So, how did I do that? Um, let's start with a more simpler method, which is going to be uh, the one for this Leo character. And all you need to do is, first of all, you need to create a character set. Okay. So I have this character set here that I made in uh, Photoshop. Um, you can get character templates online, the character set templates online, but this is what you have to essentially do. Um, and if I go back to the engine, you'll see it has uh, different graphics for each face. And what that does is when I select the animation type spin around, it makes it so that those uh, characters uh, for his name kind of uh, bobble up and down and it gives it a kind of nice uh, animation effect. If you don't want that to happen, you can just select uh, fixed graphics and it'll stay in place. Um, so those are your two options, but I like to do the spin around animation type. You want to set this event to above hero because you don't want uh, any collisions with the player or other NPCs on the map and you don't want it to appear below hero and for the trigger condition uh, you want the trigger condition to be parallel process because we're going to create all the event commands within this event okay so the first thing I did was I went to page one variable operations and I created uh, two variables here Leo X and Leo Y because this is an event, we're doing uh, the we're using the x and y coordinate um, rather than the screen relative uh, to x and y. So what you want to do is Leo x operation set equal to um, excuse me sprite. Um, you want to select sprite as your character. I named uh, that Leo event uh, b for boy. And 
and that sprite is going to have um, the X coordinate assigned to it. So Leo X is going to be equal to the X coordinate. Leo Y is going to be equal to uh, the event's Y coordinate. When that is complete, you want to go to the change event location uh, command, which can be found in uh, I think page two. So right here, ch change event location, and you want to store uh, the Leo X variable under the X coordinate and the Leo Y variable under the Y coordinate. And you want to have the event be this event. <laughs> and that's really all that you need. Um, what's going to happen is um, continuously it's going to set Leo X as X uh, as uh, this event's X coordinate and Leo Y as that event's Y coordinate and it's going to change this event's location to um, basically hover over that uh, NPC. Um, and this is essentially what causes that lag because as the NPC uh, walks about this event has to change its position accordingly and that causes a bit of a lag. Um, the pros of this method um, even though it causes a, a bit of lag during movement, it doesn't cause uh, the game itself to lag um, when compared to its uh, picture counterpart. So that's going to be the second method that we'll talk about in a second. Um, this, because it's using events instead of pictures, it won't cause the game to lag as much. So say you have you know, a dozen, say you have a really large map and you have a dozen plus NPCs. Well, with pictures, you can only have 50 pictures. So if you're using some of those pictures for overlays, um, some effects, things like that, then you're, you know, obviously limiting yourself to how many pictures you can use. That's where events come, into ha come in handy. You know, you can set as many events as your uh, tiles are available on the map. Um, so that's a pro. Uh, you can set a lot of these while uh, not having to worry so much about the lag. That's a pro for uh, this method. A uh, con for this method, obviously, is while the character moves about, it causes a bit of a... Um, it doesn't keep up with the character as well as the picture method. I shouldn't say lag because that's kind of confusing, but this won't keep up uh, with this event as well as the picture method. Okay, the second method, uh, you know, you've kind of gotten a sense of that, it's going to be the picture method. Um, so instead of creating an event with, you know, graphics for the name, we're going to use pictures instead. Um, and the coding is pretty short too. Uh, what you want to do is basically create two more variables. So this is the player uh, name, so I named it uh, variable 91 player x, variable 92 player y. Player Y, um, uh, this is going to be player X. Player X set equal to, you know, the sprite is going to be hero, and then we're going to set it to screen relative because we're using pictures. Uh, screen relative X, and for the variable player Y, we're going to set it equal to uh, the sprite hero's screen relative to Y. Okay. Then you want to subtract uh, variable 92 or the player Y. Um, I'm subtracting it by 40 if I got rid of this uh, event line and played it now. You'd see the player, uh, his name appears further down and we don't really want that. Well, I don't really want that. You, you might want that for your game. You know, have the names appear either in the midsection of the player, below the player, above the player, um, whatever you want, you would control that with the Y, uh, the y uh, axis uh, or the Y variable for that player. So I'm just doing a subtract 40 so it appears overhead and then we have a show picture. Uh, you know, make sure the picture number is not in use. You know, if you have say clouds rolling by and you're using picture 31 for those clouds then it's gonna really mess things up um, so make sure it's not in use and then you want you want to create an image <coughs> excuse me you want to create an image so I created these two images right here for the two NPCs and 
you want to set the variable reference to be player y, or player x for the x and player y for the y. I add a, a bit of transparency just to give it a nice uh, blend effect, I suppose. Hit OK, and then you want to have a wait uh, command. I'm just doing a wait zero. Um, this kind of prevents lag. And same thing for uh, our NPC PD. I created uh, two variables, uh, her X and her Y. And obviously her X is going to be set to screen relative to X. Her Y is going to be set to screen relative to Y. And the sprite is going to be uh, that, that event. Um, in this case, I named this event G for uh, girl. And once again, I'm subtracting her Y by uh, 40 just so the name appears overhead and then show picture showing that picture with variable reference of Kiki X and Kiki Y with a bit of a transparency to uh, allow some blending so that is how you would uh, employ the picture method obviously the pros for this is um, it's a lot smoother the picture follows the uh, event or the NPC a lot uh, a lot better than the uh, event um, methodology that we uh, went over in the beginning. Um, the con, however, is you know, say you have a you know large map once again with a dozen with dozens of NPCs. Well, you're only limited to 50 pictures in RPG Maker uh, 2003. And uh, if you have 50 NPCs and you're not using, you know, any overlay effects, <clears throat> and you're using this uh, <clears throat> this uh, method for, you know, naming all those 50 NPCs, well, you're gonna have 50 pictures being displayed uh, simultaneously, uh, which will cause, you know, quite a bit of lag. So you're kind of limited to how many pictures you can display. Um, so yeah, you have a sense of the pros and cons. I'll uh, play this map one more time just so you can see it again. So that concludes this video tutorial. Um, I want to thank you guys for watching, and uh, hopefully that helped. You know, those of you who were curious on how to do that, and uh, this YouTube user, I hope it helped you out. Um, like I said in the beginning, going forward, I will be taking RPG Maker tutorials. Uh, I will be doing more tutorials only via request. So if you guys are curious, if you feel my videos help you, um, you know, just comment on one of my videos, I'll see it, or you can message me uh, either through my blog or my YouTube page or even, even my Facebook page. Uh, you have a lot of ways of uh, getting in touch with me. I am helping a couple of people out right now, so uh, I am you know, pretty busy, and I do apologize if there is a delay, but I will try my best to accommodate each and every one of you. Um, so you know, thank you again for watching my video tutorial. And please do consider liking and commenting, subscribing, you know, following my blog, things like that. Um, it, it does motivate me a lot and I do appreciate all the support that I have gotten thus far. Um, I will see you guys next time and, you know, take care. Have a great rest of uh, your day. Bye.